What's up guys, Mark back here with yet another video. Today, I want to talk to you all about expensive lenses, okay? I've been doing uh, photography pretty much since I was in high school, and if you count all the stuff that kids do when they're kids, uh, then I've been doing it for the vast majority of my life. What I've basically tried to do my entire uh, photographic career was uh, essentially get the job done and not always focus so much on the gear. Now, I realize that this channel does, in fact, focus a lot on gear, but it's mainly options. Um, I like to have options. I like to play around with different types of cameras and lenses and setups and, you know, microphones and tripods. And I, I'm as much a photographer as I am a tech geek. I absolutely love technology. Whenever I get uh, my hands on new pieces of gear and stuff, I really like to geek out on it and... Uh, see what it can do for me, see what it has to offer in the way of making my life both easier, uh, less complicated, and also more productive in some cases. But I also see where having very, very expensive stuff can sometimes lead people to an air of elitism, where they focus more on the price tag of their gear rather than the quality of work that they create. Right. I had in my, uh, I think it was two videos ago, I had a list of all of my essential gear, uh, most of which I am using right now. I'm using the Joby Gorillapod, the Sony a6300, the 18-105 to uh, G Master Lens, not the G Master Lens, the G Lens, and the uh, Rode Video Micro microphone sitting on top recording my voice right now. And I had a couple of comments where people were going, what? No, no Zeiss glass? You know, and I found that to be just a little bit disheartening to my eyes, to my trained eyes, knowing what to look for and all that kind of stuff. There's not that much of an over the top kind of, I don't know, quality about them that would go, yes, this particular lens warrants an extra $500. Uh, because if you didn't have that uh, only marginally slightly better uh, edge, uh, sharpness, then you're, that, that, that photograph would have been complete and total crap, you know? I am essentially, in this video, trying to explain my thought process as far as why I buy the types of lenses that I do. Um, and it's going to be different for everyone. You know, there's going to be sticklers out there that absolutely want nothing less than the absolute perfect, you know, the, the least flawless style lenses out there. And then there's going to be other people that are on the opposite side of the spectrum that say, you know, I just want to get the, I just want to get the, sh the shot. That's all I want, and I don't care about, you know, you know, was it slightly out of focus? I don't really care about the uh, chromatic aberrations in certain lighting conditions, and you know, there's just going to be those types of people. I am somewhere in the middle where I want extremely good image quality. But then again, I also uh, don't want it to have so many problems that I'm constantly reminded of those lens problems uh, when I'm in post editing those photographs, right? And I think that for the vast majority of people, that's where they're at too. You know, they want a good lens and they want it to be uh, well constructed, well built, and they want it to have uh, decent sharpness and, and decent clarity and uh, low chromatic aberration. They don't want to be looking at an image that they just took and they're distracted the entire time by imperfections of that lens. And I'm right there with you guys. So um, a lot of people uh, think that buying, say, something like this 55 to 210. And I bring up this lens specifically because it is a big zoom lens. And I say big uh, for an E-mount. It's not like top shelf lens quality, right? But I've taken a lot of different shots with this lens. Am I honest? opinion, most of the time I get exactly the shot that I was hoping for. So, you know, a lot of people just look at the price tag, I think, and they just dismiss the lens out of hand because, oh, well, well, it's not a Zeiss, it's not a Battis, it's not a, a Tuit lens or whatever. And they just don't give the cheaper glass a chance to perform for them. You know, I think that too many people uh, just want the best so that they never have to think about, you know, the shot that they, they, uh, they take ever again. And to a certain extent, I can see the, val the value in that. There's also something to be said about people that want value in terms of dollars and cents, where every pixel is not important, where every last 
a square millimeter of the frame uh, is not important. You know, a lot of people are going to be cropping these images in. A lot of people are going to be focusing clearly on the center of the image, and then they can get a, uh, get away with having softer edges or corners or whatever. Uh, this lens in particular, it's not a very expensive lens. Uh, I've had it for about a year and a half. I don't use it all the time. It's just you know, not a part of my day-to-day -day or photographic routine. Most of the stuff that I do is creative art. It's usually in a studio somewhere. It's in some sort of enclosed space. Uh, the uh, 18 to 105 uh, does me just fine for those extended range when I want to compress the background a little bit for the most part. This honestly does a, a really good job as long as you're using flashes. It does have a variable aperture. What is it, 3.5 to 6? So, oh no, it's not even a 3.5, it's a 4.5. Uh, for most uh, applications, it's kind of a slow lens. But, the thing I'm trying to get at here is that you, as a photographer, these are just tools. You're looking for tools to get a job done. It's like screwing in, you know, a, a screw. You know, do you want to use a hammer to get the job done, or do you want to actually use a screwdriver? Or maybe you want something ultra efficient and you want to use like a, a, a real drill. So you have to kind of ask yourself those questions. What tool is going to best help me get my job done? If you use any type of gear, and you know whether it be a very, very sharp, creamy, buttery smooth prime or it be a uh, cheaper, low uh, budget zoom with variable aperture, just know the limitation of the gear and the stuff that you're working with know what it can do, know what it can't do, and then you can use your technical knowledge to get around the boundaries that most other uh, people will make you think or perceive. Having a you know variable aperture you know 4.5 to 6.3 lens is not a hindrance to me. I know how to use my gear. I know what uh, aperture I'm gonna have to set and I know what type of lighting conditions I'm gonna have to be in in order to use this lens I know that I'm gonna have to probably use some flashes uh, in certain circumstances but those are all fine by me uh, I know that when I buy certain gear I know exactly what I'm getting myself into and I'm okay and I'm comfortable working around those challenges and for the most part once you've once you've been into photography long enough they're not really challenges anymore they're not barriers to creativity. Your brain will be the biggest barrier to creativity. And uh, for all intents and purposes, any lens that you buy, whether it be really awesome, uh, you know, 50 millimeter, 35 millimeter, F1.8 or F1.4 prime lenses or whatever, they're gonna be great because you're gonna know exactly how to use them. Even these variable aperture uh, zoom lenses, they're gonna be just great because you're gonna know exactly how to use them. Your brain is the number one tool to invest in, and without that education, without that knowledge, then yes, I can see that some of this stuff might uh, present itself as a barrier or as a hindrance. In my mind, I just don't see it that way. You know, I like to buy lenses that will help me get a job done, and then I go ahead and use this tool to compensate for this tool. It definitely saves a lot of money. Because knowledge at this point in the game is 100% free. Uh, all you need is computer, you know, uh, internet access. You can go to any library, any cafe, uh, any Starbucks or whatever, and you can get online and you can educate yourself and fill your brain with as much knowledge about photography and how different things work. Uh, and it doesn't weigh anything. All the information you can put, information is 100% free and it's 100% weightless. Uh, so you can carry 400 lenses in a bag if you want or you can carry a few that didn't break the bank, use this tool to compensate for this tool. And it's gonna save you a lot of money, it's gonna save you a lot of time uh, to earn that gear, and then it's also going to uh, basically improve you as a photographer. Uh, and then once you've made some money with the cheaper stuff, you're more than welcome to upgrade and eliminate those obstacles. If you just want to get in and get out and not have to think or, or whatever, I know people don't like to think these days, but then fine, go ahead and spend that extra money. But if you like the challenge of working in different types of scenarios and environments with different types of glass and lenses and apertures and all that kind of stuff, if it brings you some level of joy, you know, enjoy the experience more than obsessing over the tools that make it all possible. You know? uh, I'm not really um, 
about bagging on anyone for what kind of gear they carry. You know, I know that different circumstances at different times uh, present themselves and you just got to get what you want to get or get what you can afford, you know. I can afford almost anything that I want for the camera system that I have. It's not a matter of whether or not I can afford it. It boils down to the fact, is it worth it? Like I said, when I buy gear, everything goes through a cost benefit analysis. And if I don't really think that it's worth it, you know, especially for the way I like to work, everyone's going to be different. Find what works best for you. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for stopping and hanging out with me today. I just wanted to have this quick little chat with you about uh, lenses and honestly, camera gear in general. So if you guys happen to enjoy this little chat, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. I'm your host, Mark Puckett. I'll see you guys again on the next one. Peace.